Okay, it looks like we're at the hour. Welcome everyone to this webinar. Uh, my name is Q Mangus. I'll be your host today at this event. Um, this webinar today we're going to be talking about the top five reasons to archive mobile communication. So we'll go ahead and get started here. Um, first of all, I want to ask a few questions for everyone to be thinking about um, as we as we go through this. <clears throat> first, <laughs> this is kind of an interesting one, is are you addicted to your phone? Uh, how many times a day do you actually check your phone? How has communication changed for you because of your phone? And how is your job different because of mobile devices? Also, how is your life different because of your mobile device? So think about those. Think about that. How different is your life and your job different because of mobile devices? Um, now, I'd also like you to answer a few questions in, in the chat, if you could, for me. Um, first of all, how many of you have a work phone and a personal phone? Just go ahead and type yes in the chat if you have both. Um, and then next is how many have a tablet, a phone, a laptop, and a desktop? Um, feel free to put in what you have. If you have a phone and a laptop only, just put phone and laptop. Or if you have a phone, a laptop, and a desktop, put those in. So we'll give it just a minute, and then we'll uh, look and see what people have. Um, it's it's probably going to be really interesting to see. And I bet you anything, if we did that a similar poll to that, uh, maybe five years ago, even maybe two years ago, it would be a lot different than what we're going to see today. <clears throat> okay. So, um, and of course, me personally, as part of the survey, I have all of the above, right? I have a personal phone, a work phone, a work laptop, a desktop, and a tablet. Um, and and uh, mobile devices have greatly changed the way I work and engage with others. Um, generally speaking, I use text as my preferred method of, of communication, and I have a ton of apps that I use on a daily basis. Um, and yes, it greatly changes the way that I communicate both in my work and personal life, and I would imagine it does the same for all of you. So let's go on. Um, I'm just waiting just a moment here as some more uh, answers come in. So let's look at the top five reasons um, as we look at those answers that come in. I'll touch back to that in just one moment here. Um, so the top five reasons um, to be archiving these mobile communications is um, the rapid increase in data being created by mobile devices, uh, employee misuse of mobile devices, the fact that data can easily be leaked from an organization via mobile devices. Um, also, there's regulations. There's a ton of regulations out there that state that organizations must archive mobile communications. Um, and depending on your industry, those can be different. We'll touch on that as well. And uh, finally, there needs to be policies. A every one of you should have policies in your organization that, that outline electronic communication. Um, if you don't have a policy, you need to get one. But the great thing about archiving mobile communications is that it can actually help you enforce these policies. So they need to be outlined via policy and you need to be able to, to enforce them. So let's go ahead and expound on these a little bit. So <clears throat> as you can see here, and as we all know, uh, mobile device usage is growing exponentially. There's a tremendous amount of data being produced every minute. Let's talk a little bit about where this uh, growth, about this growth and where it's coming from. So some of the things to take note of is average smartphone usage grew 81% in 2012. So now it's been a couple years, so uh, it's it's even higher than that. Um, further, the number of mobile connected tablets increased threefold to 36 million, and each tablet generated two and a half times more traffic than the average smartphone. That once again is from uh, data from 2012. Um, Android data levels are now higher than iPhone data levels in usage, and global mobile traffic increase will increase 13 fold between 2013 and 2017. So there's a lot of growth happening. Um, global mobile data traffic grew 70% in 2012. And it's actually happened It happened a couple of years ago that the mo number of mobile connected devices actually exceeds the number of people on Earth. <laughs> 
So we know that there's a huge amount of uh, data being produced and that it's just going to continue to grow. And we'll touch a little bit more on the growth. Um, let me pause just a minute here and go back to our poll. It looks like most people have all the above, have a tablet, phone, laptop, and desktop. Um, and yes, a number of people are communicating um, via those devices. Um, so yes, and as a quick poll that we could see here just from the people in attendance, most people have those kind of devices and and uh, and see um, and we can see that there has been a shift in the way that that uh, people communicate. Um, speaking of that, uh, texting actually generates a huge amount of mobile communication data that must be accounted for. Um, it's actually become the mainstay communication method for millions throughout the world. So think about yourself and how much you text. And if you don't text much, think about how much your, your kids or, or the younger generation text. And you wouldn't be surprised to learn that uh, a few years back, this is data from 2011, that there were 7.8 trillion texts sent worldwide. Um, but that's 250,000 texts per second. Um, this is a huge increase and it will continue to increase. Um, and something that we all need to be aware of and, and, and account for. Um, here come some more stats here. Um, we know that smartphone sales have, have skyrocketed over the past few years, and it will continue to grow for the foreseeable future. Um, and some of the major players, of course, we know the biggest um, by market share is Android. They have the, the largest smartphone operating system in the market, and it will continue to grow. Um, and uh, we know that iPhone continues to be a dominant smartphone, and their sales continue to grow. With the iPhone 6, we know that they sold tons and tons of those devices. And of course, uh, in the corporate world, BlackBerry is still widely used. Um, so those are the, kind of the big three players right now. But just be aware, and you need to know, that this continued wave of smartphone usage is going to have a large impact on your organization. You need to be ready for what that means for you. And of course, Smartphones are everywhere. Now, I'm looking at market penetration. We're up in the 80%, or almost the 80%. So we know that you, that smartphones are everywhere. And I would imagine that if you looked around your office right now, you would see ever, that most people have a smartphone. Um, and so, yeah, the the thing that you have to realize there is that it's more than likely that your employees will want to use that at work. Um, However, there's one thing that you have to realize too. Because of the amount of phones that you're seeing, um, it's probably going to level off because the penetration is so high. So, yeah, you, if you haven't dealt with it yet, you're going to need to deal with it. Um, however, if you have dealt with it, you're going to have to know that uh, that the problem probably isn't going to increase a ton, but it's going to be out there. But the point is you need to be prepared. Um, let's talk a little bit more about how people use the phone. Um, this is actually a report by Business Insider. They found that smartphone users spend at least an hour a day on their phones. Um, and this chart actually shows what they're doing. Um, so think about this. As you look at what people are doing on their phones throughout the day, um, how are you going to deal with this? How are you going to monitor usage on corporate or personal phones on your network? Um, what is your plan for dealing with the massive amounts of data that these devices generate? One thing, too, that you can see just from that is that um, employees are using social media devices on um, social media on these devices. So what's your strategy with dealing with social media along with mobile? These are things to be thinking about. How do you manage everything that your employees are doing? And, of course, <laughs> The reality is that uh, employees are using their devices at work. Um, this trend of BYOD, it creates security and archiving challenges within companies and organizations. A recent survey found that 71% of businesses said that devices cause an increase in security incidents, and 51% of organizations have experienced data loss from employee use of unsecured mobile devices. So really, you have to realize that the potential for employees to misuse and abuse these devices and your network are the realities of your workplace. So once again, how are you going to deal with this? How are you going to deal with the fact that your employees are bringing their devices to work? Do you have technology in place to combat these threats? Let's talk a little bit about um, 
other problems and other trends here. Um, <clears throat> this is something that's that's coming quick, and that is um, there are trends, new trends, which bring new threats. Uh, wearable tech is a huge thing. Um, with you know, with um, you've got fitness bands, smartwatches, and other wearable wearable devices, say like Google Glass, which we'll see what they're going to do with that, right? We know that they stopped selling that, but we'll see what the next iteration is of that. We know that it'll be coming. The point is, is that there's new trends and threats. Um, there's wearable devices. How, are, how is this technology going to impact your organization? What are you going to do about that? <clears throat> you need to be ready for these uh, new types of threats. And finally, you know, when we're talking about all of this and all the problems that can happen and everything, what you really need to be thinking about is this employee, the idea of employee protection. Um, these mobile devices actually blur the line between work and personal life. You know, many people use the same device for personal and corporate use. It presents challenges because you can be overwhelmed by data. Um, but also, you need to reinforce with your employees that they should not ever share sensitive or confidential information. They shouldn't participate in inappropriate, harmful, or harassing communications. Um, so the idea is you need to put it, as I stated earlier, you need to have policies in place to so that your employees know what they should and should not be doing on mobile devices. Then you need to have technology to support that policy. You need. For example, you need to be able to have a record of what is happening day to day. You need to see what your employees are communicating. And you need to be able to go back and look at those communications um, for oversight and also to be able to comply with regulations. So that's the idea is you're going to help ensure that your employees are safe because they're going to have a policy. Uh, in, in place. But you're going to you should be able to enforce that policy. I mean, we know that your employees are texting, right? They're using those mobile devices. Um, and, you know, the courts are increasingly asking for those texts to be produced. If you have an archive, you can go back, produce those messages, and be able to prove whether or not your employees were acting appropriately. <clears throat> so what it does is it actually gives protection to you and your organization and all your employees because you can go back and see what has happened. And as we talked about earlier, one of the major reasons to archive mobile communications is that data can leak out of your organization. Um, this is really easy, and this is something that can happen quickly, is that confidential documents, um, other sensitive information needs to stay within the company. However, with mobile devices, it's really easy um, to for an employee to transfer data outside of the organization. Um, and also, this can be done with social media as well, just to bring that up, that uh, social media also makes it easy for employees to to share information that they shouldn't, whether that's maliciously or, or just inadvertent, they can. Um, so it needs to be something that uh, you take note of. There was a recent uh, study done by Carnegie Mellon University that found that employees are not thinking about protecting corporate data when using devices. Um, one in three employees polled kept sensitive work-related information on their mobile devices. Um, Two-thirds of employees were not aware of organization policies, even though 95% of companies have a mobile security policy in place. And most of the companies reported that their employees do not understand how permissions and other access settings work on their mobile devices. Kind of scary there, right? 63% um, of work-issued mobile devices were being used for employees for personal activities. So even work-issued devices are being used for personal. You probably were aware of that, and it's logical, right? But that's something that was found in that survey as well. So what does this mean for you? Are you going to lose data because of your employees and their, and their smartphone usage? Are you going to set up policies to make sure that you're protected? something to be thinking about. Um, let's move on a little bit here. Um, I know that one of the points that we touched on here in our agenda is the idea of regulations, right? There are tons of regulations out there, um, and they really apply to archiving mobile communications. 
For example, um, if you're in financial, the FINRA rules, SEC, um, FSA government rules, they apply to all electronic communications, and mobile communications are one of them. Then, of course, you have the Dodd-Frank Act. And what this is really huge when it comes to mobile. Um, what this says is that it needs, you need to have things archived, and you need to be able to produce uh, these mobile communications within 72 hours of an auditor request. You need to be prepared for this requirement. Now, if you're in government, there's the Freedom of Information Act, and then there's other uh, acts as well. Um, there's the Federal Records Act. There's many acts that, that apply to government. <clears throat> then with education, there's FERPA. Um, healthcare, there's HIPAA and high tech. And then, of course, everyone is subject to the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure. Basically, what these state in the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure is that um, pertinent electronic communication needs to be able to be produced for uh, litigation. So if there are, if you're involved in a lawsuit or any kind of litigation, you need to be able to produce all the electronic communication that pertains to that. So that means you need to be able to easily access what has happened, what your employees have been communicating. And then there's another idea with, that was recently introduced with FRCP, and that is the idea of proportionality. Basically, it just states that you need to keep what is required by regulations or required by your policy. And if you keep that, you can comply with what the courts will ask. So let's say that um, you're in, an, in a regulated industry, say you're financial, and, you key, and it's, you're required to keep records for seven years. If you keep them for the seven years, obviously you're in compliance. Anything outside of that scope, it needs to automatically go away <laughs> so that you don't have to worry about those kind of communications. So you need to be aware of that, um, that you need to have policies and you need to comply with regulations and that you, and you need to archive based on those policies and based on what, um, on what will be best for your organization and to help you comply with these regulations and litigation. Um, and I, I know I've hit on this hard, but the, uh, the solution is, is really to have workable policies. You need to have these policies, make sure that they can be updated and that your employees are aware of them. Don't make them overly complicated. Make sure that there are items that your employees can understand and that your employees will read and that they will listen to. And then, with these policies, you need to effectively archive all of your company's mobile communications. And then you need to have quick and easy access to this data to ensure oversight of mobile communication. We know that these mobile devices are here to stay. And the benefits of mobile device usage outweigh the risks. However, you need to do things to mitigate risks. You need to implement policies and you need to have technology. Once again, policies need to outline what is and what is not appropriate usage of mobile devices. They must be clear and employees must be trained on them. And by implementing an effective policy, you're on your way to being protected from mobile device misuse. However, as I stated before, this policy is not enough. You need to have technology to validate your policy. And archiving mobile communications will validate your policy. It doesn't stop people from doing things they shouldn't. It is a deterrent, though. Because think about this. If, you, if everyone knows what the policy is and they know that you are archiving their mobile communications, it's going to stop them or at least make them think twice about communicating in ways that they should not be. Um, and, of course, by, going, by archiving, you'll have the ability to go back and see what has or has not happened. Um, and your employees can be rest assured that as they follow policy, a record exists documenting their actions. So if they are acting appropriately and there is a false accusation, um, your employees and your organization is protected. Once again, I'm going to just hit this once again. You need to have policies that are clear and concise, and you need to have technology to validate that policy. So once again, um, just to wrap it up here, and we'll get into some other things, but just to wrap up what we said, these, again, are the five reasons to archive mobile communication. We've talked about this mobile growth, the usage, regulatory compliance, and policy and protection. 
make sure that you remember these five things and that you archive mobile. By doing so, you'll be well on your way to being protected from these um, risks, these new forms of risk. Um, of course, it's not going to eliminate all risk, but it's going to be a really good way to make sure that you're prepared. So let's shift gears a little bit. We've talked about the reasons why you should be archiving. Um, let's now talk about the solution that we here at Guava provide. Um, there is a the solution that I'm going to talk about here, and we have a few minutes, and I'll, and I'll talk to this, is Retain. Retain, we call it the Unified Archive, and that is because Retain archives all communications in one central location. We archive email, multiple email systems, social media, mobile communications, and even web search. Um, the great thing here is that you don't have to have multiple solutions for each type of communication. If you want to archive mobile today, you can. If you want to archive email tomorrow, you can do that as well. Um, so the idea here is that you have one central archive for all your electronic communication that can be easily accessed, searched. You can perform e-discovery. Um, you, you can grant rights to end users. Um, you can have auditors and other legal teams come in and search that archive. And the idea here is that Retain will help you ensure that you are protected. You have easy and accessible access to the archive. You can perform e-discovery on that archive. You can export communications. Um, you can view messages in their context. And remember, when you invest in an archiving solution, it's not something that you need to be thinking about just for the next year or two. It's something that you need to be thinking about long term. And what's great about the solution that we're talking about here today with Retain is that it's something that can be expanded depending on your organization needs. Um, it's something that will support the kinds of communication that's going to be coming in the future. It supports what's here now and what's coming in the future. Let's talk a little bit here about mobile specifically. The Retain mobile piece um, securely archives on a high level SMS and MMS text messaging and phone call logs for Android, as well as BBM PIN, SMS, MMS, and phone call logs for BlackBerry. So that's the first part is that for BlackBerry and Android, um, we archive that. And that can be done um, with BlackBerry. It's done without any kind of app. It's done directly via uh, the BES server. And for uh, Android, it's done via an app that's on the phone. Now, for iOS, there's something really innovative, and that is there's an app that actually that um, we would provide you that separates your personal data from corporate data. And what this does is it actually assigns a separate business phone number to your mobile device. And the, via this app, uh, employees can make mobile phone calls and send text messages. These communications are secure and encrypted, and they're archived. So what this does is it gives you a secure, encrypted, and compliant mobile communication solution. So for iOS devices, we can, no one can actually archive what is done via um, iMessage, via the built-in messaging on the phone. However, there is a solution out there, and that's with Retain, to be able to archive your iOS communications via this app. And then the other great thing is, is that you actually have a separate way for your employees to communicate that's encrypted and secure. And this uh, also can be deployed for Android as well if you want to be able to partition that and have a separate mobile uh, phone number for Android devices. And as we stated before, mobile communication is a preferred way to communicate, especially among your younger workers. So you need to be prepared for that and you need to archive mobile communications. Um, this will help give you that oversight that you need to ensure that you're protected. And just to go a little further with this uh, Retain Secure Mobile Messaging and Compliance Solution, it includes a few pieces, and here I'll just give you a brief overview on this diagram here. Um, the pieces are the Sale Trust Secure Line, the Retain Collector, and the Retain Archive. And so what happens is you have your employees that are using the, the separate app the Secure Line app on their phones. It assigns them a separate number. As they communicate 
within the network. So subscriber to subscriber. That goes through the Cell Trust Secure Line server. And all of that communication is secure and encrypted. Um, you can access all of that uh, communication via web-based portal. And Retain collects that information from the Cell Trust server um, and archives it directly into Retain. And then you can go back and see what has happened. You can view all um, of those communications across the board. Um, and then if, an, if a subscriber is communicating via phone calls or text to somebody outside of the network else that is a non-subscriber, it will still go through the Cell Trust Secure Line server. It will still be archived, but what will happen is once it hits the carrier, it's not encrypted anymore, and then it will go to the non-subscribers. And then once they reply, it then once again hits that uh, Secure Line server and goes back to the subscriber, and that is all archived. So what this will do is make sure that you have a dedicated phone number for business communications only, that you'll be able to have oversight and they will be able to archive. Uh, here's a view of of the UI, and this shows uh, SMS archived messages. Um, this is what administrators will see when they're browsing the archive. Um, and you'll notice here that uh, messages can be browsed by type. They can be browsed by SMS, MMS, or phone messages. Um, and then for BlackBerry, you can see that uh, PIN messages and BlackBerry messages can be viewed as well. And what's great here is that uh, you can see who the message is from, the subject of the message, who it was sent to, and the date. And a user and admin, or a user can access their personal archive, and an admin can do some of the following. They can place a hold on a message, they can tag a message, delete a message, forward, export, restore, or even print the message. Um, and you can actually specify a time period um, for what you're viewing. Um, here's a view of the MMS archive. A user can access, once again, their own personal archive, and an admin can view the, the entire archive. Here's a screen capture of the phone call logs. And here's an example of the unified archive. Um, so what's great here is you can actually access all messages from one central archive. This is actually unique to retain, um, meaning it's the only solution to display all communications from one easy access, easily accessible archive viewer. Um, and you can see here on the scope here, you can actually search simpler complex terms and uh, the results will appear in this Web Access Archive viewer. And as I stated before, an ad admin can actually perform the same function as this when browsing. They can place a hold, they can tag, delete, forward, etc. Um, the other nice thing, too, is that these messages can actually be exported. So if you don't want to grant rights to certain individuals, like an auditor and, or an outside team, you can actually export these to a standalone viewer which can then be given to an outside team, and they can access that viewer and view that subset of the archive. And finally, to finish up, um, there is a couple of options for deployment. It can be deployed on prem or in the cloud. And the cloud solution called Guava Cloud Archiving has the same functionality as the on-prem version. However, it doesn't have the hardware administration, maintenance, and system support costs. And generally speaking, uh, cloud services save about 35% over on-premise. Um, so something to consider as well is, is how you deploy that. So just to finish up, I just want to touch base on here that the big thing is that Retain is the solution to archive all forms of messaging communication. Um, with Retain, you can archive all communications, all electronic communications, email, social media, mobile, web searches in one central archive. You don't have to worry about deploying three or more separate solutions um, for all of your types of communication. It's all archived in one central location that you can quickly and easily access, search, perform e-discovery. Um, I would encourage you to check out Retain. Try it out for yourself. Um, visit us at guava.com slash retain to see more information. Um, you can go to guava.com slash quote to actually get a quote for how much this would cost for your organization. Um, and then you can contact us at questions at guava.com for more information. Um, and if you want to actually try it out yourself, you can actually go to guava.com slash download to download a free 30-day trial.
So once again, the next steps are to go ahead and download that trial. We'd love to earn your business, and, and um, we know that it's something that will really help you uh, to ensure that you're compliant with these mobile communications. Um, so that's it for today. We do have some time for some Q&A, but I just want everyone to remember here that you need to be archiving mobile communications. We went over those top five reasons. Um, I encourage you to, uh, to start doing that today. Now we do have some time for Q&A. Um, as I'm doing that, I'm going to just show a few success stories. So it looks like we have some questions here. Um, the first one has to do with what we saw in those screenshots. It says, um, the Browse feature looks like it's just for mobile messaging. Um, can I see other items in the Browse tab? So yes, um, when I went over that, I was just showing uh, the mobile thing. But However, when you're browsing, you can actually browse all communications. You can browse your email, mobile, and social media. And of course, when a search comes in, the search that I did on that for that screenshot was just for mobile. However, you can, when you do a search, all electronic communication will come across. Uh, the next one is, if a user has multiple to, multiple devices, how does that work? So if a user has more than one device, so say they have uh, two or three, they have an Android and an iPhone and, and a Blackberry, <laughs> who knows, um, Retain supports multiple devices per user. What it's done is it's tied to a username or email in Retain. Um, and there's no limit to the number of devices a user can have. So how it works is, yes, you can tie as many devices to one user as you'd like. Um, however, the, there is another question in here that I just noticed. It says, how is it priced? Um, it's priced on a per-user level. Um, so if you already have Retain, Retain, is a, Retain Mobile is an add-on module. So there's a charge for this functionality. Um, and if you don't currently have Retain, yes, there is a, a price per, per user for Retain. And that looks like all the questions we have right now. Um, thanks, everyone, for submitting those and for your interest in this uh, webinar. We'll go ahead and uh, finish up. Um, thanks again, everyone, for being here and for your interest in this topic. Um, if you'd like more information about mobile communications and mobile communications archive, feel free to visit us at guava.com. Um, also, if um, you do have questions, I encourage you once again to reach out to us. Um, and we can answer those questions for you. And just one item to take note of is this presentation has been recorded. So you can go back and view this um, again if you'd like, or you can share this with other people um, that have an interest in archiving and, and uh, the need for archiving mobile communication. Thanks again, everyone, for being here. And uh, we hope to see you on the next one.